we're all excited to know that Madam Web is coming out soon because like we were all blown away by that trailer. Like the the exposition dumps in that were like so slick and so well done. I just loved it. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. <laughs> but it's not going to get a good reception, apparently. According to the box office tracking, it says that Madam Web is tracking for a worse op box office opening than Morbius. Uh, according to Box Office Pro, which is generally fairly accurate, uh, the upcoming superhero team-up movie is currently tracking to earn between $25 million and $35 million in its opening weekend at the box office. Yeah, I was like... Um, if Madam Web does end up launching somewhere in that range, it would mark the lowest opening weekend yet for an SSU franchise. Morbius currently has the worst opening weekend at 39 million, followed by Venom at 80 million, and then Let There Be Carnage at 90 million. Even if it comes in on the higher end of its tracking, its opening would still be lower than the Marvels, another female fronted superhero movie <laughs> that opened uh, with 60, sorry, 46.1 million. So it's not looking good for Madam Web. You know, there's th two of the guys who wrote the because there's four screenwriters for Madam Web, and two of them are the screenwriters from Morbius. <laughs> it's got it's, it's, they're, well, they're like anti geniuses. I don't know what it is, but they're they're like anti geniuses. They have something. They infuse something into a script that is just so memeable. Yep, it, it's because this is this is Sony's like take on the superhero universe isn't it they're trying to get their venom verse off the grounds and it's so weird because like on the one hand you've got the mcu which like was massive and now it's fallen off a cliff and just like imploded you've got the dcu which never really got off the ground and then just shit his pants and passed out on the ground in a pool of its own vomit <laughs> and then in between them you've got this tiny little like sony venom verse it's just like trying to draw in characters that it happens to have the rights to for these little movies um, that, that go nowhere. And, oh, God bless them. Like, I love them for trying, but wow, they've released some turds, man. Morbius was yeah. released twice. Yes, it was. It yeah. flopped twice. Speaking of <laughs> a movie that bombed twice. That was where the, the the studio saw the meme campaign and actually thought it was genuine fan enthusiasm and thought, <laughs> oh, well, yeah. we'll re-release it. So embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, and then Venom Venom does suspiciously well a lot. And it's just like, they, they're on their third one coming up now, right? Yeah. Oh, is there a third Venom movie coming out? Yeah, yeah they, just, they just make loads of money. <laughs> I've seen both of them at the cinema and I could not tell you a single thing about either of them. Same. Tom Hardy has forgotten in them. everything. I remember one scene where he eats a piece of pizza out of a garbage can, and that's literally the only thing I can remember. It's they're hideously ugly. They've got these. The, the, a lot of the big battle scenes take place at night, and Venom is black, and usually his opponents are also very dark colored. So you can't, you you literally can't see what what's happening. It's a hideous yeah. movie. Drinker, if, if all I can say about Venom 2 is that it stars Tom Hardy and it's directed by Andy Serkis, so the equivalent of a Chris Stuckman review, then yes, it must have left zero <laughs> on me. Like, I've got okay, come on, let's, let's not say, it's not that bad, it's not Chris Stuckman review level bad. Do, you want, do you want to segue into some totally irrelevant discussion about your childhood, about how you used to go to the movie theatres and you used to like Venom? Did the movie make you think deeply about anything, or was it just... <laughs> Venom is a character that I know not much about. <laughs> Thank you. I watched this movie. And I almost, I came really close to having an opinion, and then I thought, no, I shouldn't do. No, that. not today. <laughs> <laughs> I suppressed those feelings. <laughs> you know, you know how they talk about chaotic neutrals in in terms of human psychology and so on like yeah. what is chris stuckman's version of that he's like a neutral 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 a, neutral. Plas a placid neutral <laughs> like placid just, beige <laughs> i just i don't have any opinions about anything really it's so nice that they made a film thank you but yeah <laughs> right. madam webb just it, I feel like I say this about a lot of superhero movies now, especially from DC, but it feels like a movie that belonged to a very different era of filmmaking. It feels like a film that they should have released five, six years ago. And it might have done okay. People might actually have cared. They are so over these kinds of films now. 
And the fact think, that it's coming yeah. out at this time of year. It's... We might also be getting to the point where it, it's going to do more damage in the long run than it will give anybody any benefit. Because there was a time throughout, so maybe 2008 through 2015, 16, even 2019, when it was sort of ingrained in the audience's mind that you go and see these films because they are all in some sense connected. You, you're not in the habit of missing them during the high days of Marvel. The more of them that come out, even if they're not MCU properties, superhero films in general, the more of them that come out that you just think, eh, nah, not for me, or no, I can't be bothered, or it doesn't matter because it's not going anywhere. I think the more it gets set in the audience's mind that these things are not sort of these marquee events anymore, you don't need to go and see all the superhero films. And so when the next big one comes out, more people will be minded to say, probably not going to go see that one actually, because they're used to dropping out of these stories. Is this release same day as Argyle? Maybe. I don't know. Question. I'm sure it is. I just want to suggest that it's just bold of you that you'd assume that they're going to decide not to watch it as opposed to they've even heard of it. I discovered a, a really of, yeah. bizarre fact about Man and Web while I was researching it. Did you know that this is a period movie? It's set in 2003. 2003. What? Yeah. Exactly it's, what? It's a stumble. Um, stumble I heard about that. Uh, it's got something to do with the, they were going to try and tie it in with particular Spider Man, right? Um, Something like I think uh... it, it, it ended up in 2003 <laughs> by accident. They were going to do it in the 90s, I think, for to tie it in with a, a different, maybe a Spider-Man movie. Yeah, which and doesn't make any fucking sense. Wait, wait, so, them... But they yeah, did so... reshoots, but you know, the only way they could do the reshoots cheaply, um, but was to make it look like 2003. They couldn't get it to look like modern day. I, I'm not sure. It's a bit of a convoluted mess, but it's, so, it makes it even are more meme. <sighs> Are they going to try and tie it in with the, the Raimi Spider-Man trilogy? From what I heard, the intention was to tie it to Andrew Garfield, but then they'd set it in a timeline that's earlier even than Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. So they couldn't use any of them or something. There was like a huge fuck-up. That's what oh. I was told, anyway. Uncle and that they had ben to change and all of in the movie. They like made a mistake on the timelines. <sighs> I don't know. Like uh, I've had people tell me this, and I was just like, "You fucking kidding me? How does this even happen? Like, how do you fuck up this badly?" Is it time you wind this shit? I mean, is there anything that? I mean, getting away from the memes, is there anything that actually recommends the movie commercially? Is there any reason audiences would show up to this? No, Anybody? not at this. <laughs> like, uh, uh, Madam Web. No one's heard of her. No one cares. No one's into superhero movies, so like they're not going to be even motivated to learn about the character. So I don't think there's anything. That's there's no actors or actresses to... that are going to draw audiences. Not really. No, and it's not a fact that the, the fact that it's getting released at this time of year. This is the dumping ground for shit movies that the the studios know that nobody wants. So uh, yeah, yeah, January, February, you're. You just like ended the whole conversation with that statement. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least at least Killed they it. know that it's a flop. At least they know it's a flop. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's such an interesting film that there is absolutely just, nothing to say. This, that's um, so normal at this point. There's like, what, what is that? Is, is that a surprise? Like, no. I don't think I, I've even I, seen I, the trailer for it. I, I don't care. I mean, I'm going to have to see it because I'll probably end up covering it, but I, I, I know nothing sure. about the character. I've not seen the trailer. I don't know anything about it, and I fully expect to have forgotten it within two weeks of it coming out, like Echo. But, uh, uh, yeah, if they know it's a flop, though, surely they'll take a lesson from that and stop doing it, and yet they, they keep doing it over and over I mean, over they, probably, they, they probably will, to some extent, take a lesson from it. The Like Mauler said, the Venom movies, I think, make money somehow mm, they, do. they are somehow successful even though nobody remembers them and nobody knows what the hell the, the point of them is well, apparently they, they got it in their head like a lot of people do it's just like so we can make anything and make makes money and it's like are you do you not have a team that can tell you how this works like venom and its vague connections to a multiverse <clears> are enough to drag it through but like i wouldn't even expect necessarily that it's something that like you know can go for any more than two films i have no idea I don't know how yeah, long Tom would... Hardy's going to be an asset for you. Like, who knows? Would Venom make money if they make a third Venom? Surely it's going to flop. I mean, look what happened to Aquaman 2. Aquaman uh, 2 is a flop, and Aquaman 1 made over thing. a million dollars. If they threw in a Spider-Man, like, it gets complicated in terms of how much attention it can get. Spider-Man's pretty uh, audience-drawing at this point. At least he's, well, he's the biggest audience draw for all the superhero uh, characters right now. 
It would need to be Toby Batman. Maguire or Andrew Garfield, I think, in order for it to be a genuine success. Uh, I don't know why anyone has got it in their head that Tom Holland is less of a draw than Andrew Garfield when no, the Amazing Spider-Man I don't think that can they use Tom Holland because he's he's because I know the, the Sony the rights the, the copyrights a bit confused. So I, I don't as far know as I know, them. that's the plan that they're fighting right now. Over I saw some article or tweet about whether or not they're going to make Spider-Man Four story grounded or uh, you know spectacle ish. Like that's what Sony and um, Kevin Feige are fighting over. Yeah, I saw the article too. They want um, all three Spider-Man in Spider-Man Four. So that that, that was a that twice. was a one shot deal. That that really feels like the kind of thing they should have done once, and it was a nice gimmick. It was cool to see them all together. Mm. But they want That's money. It. Yeah, and they the, like the bean counter said if you do more multiverse stuff, maybe maybe more money. I don't know why they keep saying this. <laughs> Someone needs to stop them. Who's the guy that keeps telling them this? Well, it, it's you know I talked about this just recently. That the problem with multiverses is that you have to keep them very contained before they spill over into everything and destroy everything that you've created. You know, make it a very brief window into different realities if you really have to do it. That's why No Way Home worked so well. Yeah. It was just confined to the Spider-Man universe. It wasn't the fate of all reality or anything that was at stake. And it was it was a neat little concept, and it was wrapped up in a really good character-driven drama. That's what made it work. Um, you try to exploit that even more, you're just going to go down the same road that you've always gone down with the multiverse stuff, like with Multiverse of Madness, you end up with garbage because you're trying to you're trying to incorporate way too much stuff, uh, way too many stakes uh, into what should be a self-contained story. It's Don't also hard to it. see how, how you could even repeat the No Way Home trick without just effectively replaying large plot beats. I mean, one of the other things that I think made No Way Home such a draw and such a success is that. It, it, yeah, you're right. It, the multiverse works because it's a momentary intrusion that is resolved by the close of the film. But during that momentary intrusion, you've got effectively the character resolutions for the other previous two Spider-Man and all of the main and important villains. So you've you've pretty much run through your major plot beats that you could use some sort of crossover with. I'm struggling to think doing something like that again, how you would build on that in a way that's not just, oh, look, uh, Dr. Octopus is back again, or the Spider-Men are back again. But yeah, is there any new ground to be plumbed with that, or was that just a one-off? It's been strip mined. Both those trilogies have been strip mined. They've been thoroughly plundered. There's nothing else that you could really put on screen that only to care about from any uh, those those six movies with uh, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. What do you think? I think so. I think they've been they've been thoroughly plundered. I mean, the all the best villains were there. The two main Spider Men oh, yeah, were there. But we progress them, right? Like you put Spider-Man, if, if I'm not saying they would do this, they should, but if they had a Tommy Maguire Spider-Man 4, we would just give him a new villain, his own vision. It could fucking be the Mysterio they were going to run or the, their own vulture that they were going to run, right? You could, you could do anything you want, really. Could they Especially have being... I, I understood that they were interested in doing more Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies because he was up for doing it. He was still young enough yeah. to play the character and they were interested in, like, starting his his movies up again but it seems like nothing's really come of that yeah. like independently why I'm not the, do three i Spider think it's all been movies. talked about it's it's in a weird position right now i think because there's, there's so many choices you can make but you've got to commit to one and as soon as you do it knocks out the rest basically like you wouldn't want to make a andrew garfield sequel toby Maguire sequel and spider-man 4 with tom holiday to focus and if you do then that cancels out the other ones and you got spider verse as well Yep. Well, the, the I mean, thing is, you do it, but it's you fucking Madam Web too. <laughs> but if you do, if you do Tom Holland, then you have to share like twenty five percent of your revenue with Marvel. Whereas if you got Andrew Garfield, and as far as I understand it, then he's yours, and you can just make one hundred percent of the profits. Tobey Maguire, like you know, I, I love him and stuff, but like he's he's probably too old now, and he's done his trilogy. He got like his effectively his fourth movie with uh, you know No Way Home. He, he doesn't need to do any more. There's less incentive for him to do it. Whereas Andrew Garfield, I think, is more of a viable prospect. Yeah, drinker, Gary would beat you up <laughs> for sales. I'm just saying, like, you know, you almost have to look at it from the point of view of, like, tarnishing your own legacy. And I think Maguire, like, can at least rest easy and say, like, you know, I had three, well, two good movies and one, eh. And then, like a fourth one that just really brought everything mm. back. So, like four films that I've old, done. Old bastards like me might enjoy a Maguire movie, though. 
Maybe yeah, but you didn't enjoy like the shit, Flash then... with Michael Keaton in it just because you can bring back the, the nice old guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. but No Way Home is point. historically considered to be one of the only things that were worthwhile in phases four and five put together. Mm. So I, I guess the point I'm making here is like if you're a studio that wants to set up the idea of bringing back a really like <laughs> not a really popular Spider Man, but like uh, a man who like has kind of redeemed himself now and is uh, you know is a good prospect and is still young enough to play the role for a few more years um, and is up for doing it, I think Garfield would probably be your better choice. That's all I'm saying. Like, Wait, from a studio pick... point of view, that's who I would pick. But, like, I, I wonder if they have a bit of reservation about it because of um, the success of Amazing Spider-Man. And then, of course, everything's just in flux right now. I don't know. I, I assume that we're getting delays on everything because they just don't know what the correct decision is. 